Hi guys, today I'm going to go over how to set up a Windows and Linux client in Nagios Core Server. So I already went over how to set up Nagios Core Server and I'll put a link here to a video that will show you how to set that up. So now we're going to add some clients to be monitored. Let's see when there's a problem, let it notify us when the server goes down, when the disk fills up, when there's too many users on a system, when you're running out of memory. You need to know these things before there's a problem. You don't want your end user being the one notifying you. So let's go take a look at how easy it is to set up a Windows and Linux client. We're going to install some software, we're going to configure some files, and then we're going to start monitoring our systems. It's going to be super easy, so just keep watching and I'll show you guys how easy it is for you guys to set this up. Let's start by taking a look at where we left off in the previous video. We have our Nagios server up and running, we have localhost that's up. And we can take a look at the website and see that localhost is the only server. So now if we hop over to our Linux client, we're going to notice that we're going to have to install some of the prerequisite software, which is OpenSSL and OpenSSL-develop. So these are the two required packages before we go over and download NRPE, Nagios Remote Plugin Executor. It's kept on SourceForge, so it's completely open source, completely free product to download. So we'll download the latest uh, version that was put out. You can also use wget and do the same command if your clients do not have a graphical user interface or you could always do a transfer, some kind of secure file transfer. So let's go ahead and uncompress it and we're going to do the same thing we kind of did in the previous video. We're going to compile our source code. So it's generally the same steps. So we're going to run the configure script. It'll go through and check all our system libraries and system software installed to make sure we have all the prerequisite software. It gives you a little summary. So notice that port information. We'll be using that later. Then we're going to do a make and that's going to go ahead and compile. Next we're going to go add user. So add user Nagios. So we're going to do this before we do the make install otherwise we will generate an error message. So because the make install does look for the Nagios user when it actually installs. So you notice here the dash O, it's showing the owner and the group of the files that it's putting into our file system, into our execution and our path. So user local Nagios are all owned by the Nagios user and it will run as the Nagios user as well. Now we're going to go ahead and install another package, it's X -I -N -A -D. This is, a, that, this is a package that runs on a system that monitors what is trying to be connected to from your network. What port exactly is being connected to and depending on what port it is, what service, daemon, or executable, executable code should be ran or ran when that port's being connected to. So we need that so when port 5666 is being attempted to connect it to that our NRPE plugin will actually run. So now if we go back to the source code we downloaded, there's a folder in there called sample config. One of the sample configs is an xinnd config file. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. So we're going to change just a couple of the attributes in here. Um, only from, so we're going to put in our Nagios server. But also take a look at server arguments, the dash C. That's our NRPE config file. So we're also going to be taking a look at that. So we're going to copy the NRPE.ex xinad file over to etc xinad.d. So this is a directory that contains the xinad configuration files and there should be a few of them already in there if you take a look. <clears throat> so if you notice port 566 is listed there and the host only, only host. We're going to list here, configure it so it points to our Nagios server only. So that's the only server that this daemon, this executable code will run for when port this port is connected to. So once we copy it over to our Nagi, our xinad.d directory, we're going to configure the file. So we're going to change the IP address here to whatever IP address you have your server configured to. So in my case, I have a small internal network here. I'm testing this on. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. Now once I do that, I can go ahead and restart the service, the XINAD service, and then it'll recognize um, the new configuration file I just added for NRPE. So here we go, service XINAD, and we're going to go ahead and do a restart. Um, it wasn't started already, so stopping failed, so that's why. Okay, so once we do that, we go to, over to the ETC services file. We're going to add an entry for NRPE for the Nagios plugin and notice the port. This is actually numeric order, so you have to scroll down quite a bit to get to 5,000. 
600s to actually put this entry in. So this actually file does a mapping between the port and the name. So when you do commands that actually print out port information, instead of just listing the port number, it will list the name here. So that's mainly the reason this file is being used. So later on when we do some commands where it might list um, some port information, just know that it gets the name NRPE from actually from this file. And as you can see, there's a tons of like SSH, Telnet, FTP, all the mail services, Apache, all the web services, they're all, all in that service file. So you can scroll through, it's actually interesting. So once we do that, take a remember we're gonna look at our NRP configuration file. So we're gonna make this folder. So that's the path we're giving it. And again, we're gonna go to that sample config file and we're going to make, copy our configuration. This is a sample configuration. We're going to copy it over to that path. So let's now go ahead and edit that config file we copied over and customize it to our environment. So let's go ahead and CD over to user local Nagios etc. And we're going to go in with VI into that configuration file. There's a couple entries we can change here. But you notice there's many options that you can't change if you want to change the port or the user it runs as. So we're going to change the server address. Now you can have the server address. It's good practice to leave localhost in there. <laughs> I forgot that I made that mistake. So I went back and added it later. So localhost 127.0.0.1 and then comma and then the IP address of your server. And the reason you have localhost in there is so we can run a little test later to make sure that this plugin is working correctly. So here we go with the test. So if you go into user local Nagios lib execute, you can actually run the check underscore NRPE and then minus H and the host IP address. So we're doing localhost test since we're running on the same system. You can actually do the same command for remotely as well. Of course, if you open up the port and everything um, in X init D. So once we do that, we know that this actually plugin is working correctly. If you have any issue with your plugin, you would have got an error message here. So the fact that it does display this with, yes, the version back actually mean it is working correctly. So now if we go into etc config, we're going to open up the port that we just configured. So of course we can't, don't open up our firewall and no one, our Nagio server won't be able to connect to that port remotely. So we're going to add port 5666, it's a TCP port. So we're going to go ahead and add an entry for this and etc sysconfig IP tables. Once we're done editing the file, we could restart the firewall with service IP tables restart and we could list our entries and take a look at it with IP tables hyphen hyphen list. And you notice our new entry right there. Again, did you see where it says NRPE? That's because it's reading it from the etc services file. Now if we go back into user local etc user local Nagios etc. The Nagios.config file is there. And now we're on the Nagios server. So you just notice that we went to a different system. We're on our Nagios server and we're going to configure our Linux client. In that Nagios config file, we have a local.config file. Now localhost.config, that is the template for Linux systems. So we're going to go ahead and go into our objects folder. And we're going to copy that file, the localhost because that's going to be our Linux template. And then you can copy this every time you add a new Linux client. You can copy this and modify it for your Linux client. So once we copy and go in BI, and we're going to edit a couple fields. So host, alias, and address. This is where we start, but there's actually a number of other locations where you have to change the host name. So we're just going to change it here. We're going to call it our Nagios Linux client, which is the host name of our, well, our Linux client. And then I give it, I usually give it the same alias, but you don't have to you give it a more descriptive name if you want to, something longer. And then the IP address of our Linux client, so whatever the IP address is on the network. Now all the services that it's going to check on the Linux client is also listed in this file. So we'll scroll down and take a look at that. But what's also needs to be removed is it's a duplicate group entry. So we have to remove it because it's already been defined in localhost, so it's a Linux group. So host group. So since it's already been defined in local host, you can't define it twice. So we're just going to delete a couple of those lines so we don't define it again. And if you notice, service definitions is listed under there. And we have all our service definitions. But notice where it says host name, it still says local host. So we're going to modify the file. 
a quick way you could have gone through and modify it everywhere it said localhost is with this vi command so it's a string replacement it says from one to the end of the file substitute localhost for nagios hyphen linux user globally so that's that slash d at the end so everywhere it says localhost in that file it has been replaced with nagios hyphen linux clients so once we're done editing the file, I'm going to change the owner just so it's consistent to make sure all my files are owned by the correct user. And we can go ahead and restart the Nagio server. So service Nagios restart. Once we do that, we can go back to the Nagios website and take a look at our newly added host. So there we have our Nagios client. You see it's up. You see some services here. Since you just added it, we have services pending. So it's going to take a few minutes uh, for those services to check in and go ahead and um, start updating its information. So this is the default options um, the template has. Of course, you can add more different checks, add checks, remove checks of what's being checked on the server. So if you don't want to know how many users, for example, is logged in, that's fine. There's a number of other options here we could do with the host. Um, maybe I'll make a video later going over the different options. But here you go, a couple minutes later, we have all our services checked in. So that's nice, everything looks good. We've got a warning, a forbidden warning on our web server that we can take a look at. Um, but that's it for the Linux client. Now let's take a look at the Windows client setup. So we have a Windows Server 2012 configured here and we're gonna download from SourceForge. SourceForge has the NS Client++ or NSCP executable. This is going to be our Linux plugin for the Nagios environment on a Windows system. So you can use the same plugin on any Windows platform and it should work. So I downloaded the 64 bit version of the plugin. Uh, most environments have just 64, but if you happen to have 32, make sure you download the 32 version of the plugin as well. So we're just going to run this. It's a very simple installation. Um, I'm going to do custom just to take a look at some of the additional options, see what's getting installed here, just to take a look around to know. So you can kind of see which of the plugins are being installed. So there's a couple of them here. If you go over to exchange.nagios.org, there's over 4,000 plugins. You can take a look at there. Here we have the configuration for Nagios plugin. Now this file has a number of uh, different services. There's also a password stored in there. And just be noted, it is a clear text password, the one we're about to enter here. So we're going to put in our server IP address and then the NS client password. So this is used by check NT plugin and that plugin just reports back the information that's being collected on this server. So we have our password is 10.23 and if you go over to that config file from the previous screen, it will actually show 10.23 in clear text, so just be aware. So here are some of the common plugins I check. I usually check the top three and they collect information, report back, they do a few different things. Um, once that's done, we will finish our installation. If you go into our services on the system, we can see that our uh, Nagios client is actually running. It's up and running so we don't have to start it up or anything. If we go into the installation folder, we find that nsclient.ini file. And if you take a look here, you'll see that there is a um, clear text password in here and this host server IP address. So if your server changes or the password changes, this is where you come um, make those modifications. Now if we head over and back to our Nagio server, we can do the similar things we did for the Linux client. We're going to configure those files, so user local Nagios etc. So the Nagios.com file actually has a Windows template. So you could save this file. I'm just going to modify it. If you have other Windows clients, you can go ahead and copy that file over. So we're going to copy that Windows client, and we're going to go in there and go into our objects folder and modify it. So I uncommented it in Nagios.com, and now I'm in the Windows client, Windows.com file, and I want to start changing the host name. This similar fields we changed in the Linux client, we change the host name, the alias, and the IP address. So my host is called Nagios hyphen Windows client. Again, you can give it a more meaningful alias than what I generally give. And then you give it uh, the host IP address. Now remember that all the services, again, are listed underneath here. So you have to go through and make sure you change the host name for each of the services in this configuration file. Uh, we could use that vi command again and do a string substitution and which i'll show you right here in a second i'll show you the command to issue if you use vi it's a very simple command i use this all the time so it's nice 
So in VI, you would hit escape, and then the command, as you see here, from the first line to the end, substitute winserve with nagios hyphen windows client. So whatever your host name, and then slash d's for global, so if there's multiple entries on a single line. There's also the host group listed in here as well. Since this is the first time a Windows host group is being generated, this won't generate an error message. But just know if you copy this file for another Windows server that you have to remove the host group from the second one. So it's not replicating commands. So once you do that, you go ahead and take a look at the configuration file. You can notice here, there's our password again our temp123, make sure that is the same here as it is on the client as well. So you got to make sure that they match, otherwise it won't be able to authenticate and actually pull the data from the client. After that, we're going to restart our Nagios service, but first let's check our configuration file, make sure our Nagios.com file is correct and that the Windows.com file we created is also correct. So once we do that and generate with the um, now use minus V in the path to the config file. It generates this uh, summary right here. We can take a look how many services and hosts we're monitoring. Restart our Nagios server. And now if we go back to our website, you see our client now listed, Nagios Windows Client. And if we click over on services, you can see our services listed. So this um, will actually generate a ping. So I'm going to show you how to open up ICMP traffic for IPv4 in Windows because it won't respond back to that ping. So it'll show us host down. So I, unless you have some security measures in your network where you don't allow ping on Windows servers, but by default now Windows Server 2012 does not allow ping. So that's why it's showing ping packet loss 100%. So I'm going to go back to the Windows server and just show you really quick how to just open up that port. And it's just, it's really simple unless you have a specific reason in your environment not to do it. Um, if you go to your control panel and go to your firewall settings, I'm going to go over to the advanced options. Um, there's already an entry in there, so you don't have to generate a new IP, I'm sorry, a uh, firewall rule. You just go down to files and printers, sharing. You want to look at echo requests, and if you open that up a little bit, you can see ICMP traffic for, um, for IPv4. I'm just going to enable it. So if you right click and you go ahead and select enable. So now if we go back to the Nagio server, we could take a look at our host now. If you click on host and it'll show you that the ping is now responding, right? It has a packet loss of 81% from that few minutes where it couldn't get a ping answer, a response from ping. So now it's responding as up and it's going to report as up. If you don't want this as a uh, option for the reason you don't want to turn on ping, then you could just turn off the alerts if you set up alerts to make sure they respond to um, system up or down. You could try testing if the system's up and down by the services running on it. So now if we go back to services, you can see that the services are now starting to be checked in. And after a few minutes, we do have one services down. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful that you were able to add your Windows and Linux clients. If you find it, it was too many files to configure or too complicated, check out Nagios XI. Fantastic product. It has a nice wizard to add clients. So it makes this process much, much easier. And it has the tons of built-in functionality over the free version of Nagios Core. So Nagios XI, I've been using both products of these for a number of years. Highly recommend both of them. It's whether it really determines if your company can afford it or not. And really, this is such an important um, task to do to monitor your system that I highly recommend spending a little bit of money and actually, you know, monitor it properly and monitor it completely. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Bye.